The session is basically about the problem that web archives are huge, they're difficult for users to understand, and um, sometimes they're even difficult for us to understand, they're difficult for the technical uh, people to get a hold of, and uh, all of these projects in their own way make the holding understandable and uh, ease dissemination. So um, we will uh, start with uh, actually uh, Sean Jones. Uh, he's about to complete his PhD at Old Dominion's Web Science and Digital Libraries Research Group, and he's specializing in storytelling using Web Archive. And so uh, there's a slide for us, which will uh, be very soon up, and he will do a short um, recap of the video that he did. So go ahead, Sean. Thanks, I appreciate it. Um, and, and, and thanks to all the IIPC organizers for putting this together. Um, I'm, I'm Sean Jones and I'm the head of the Dark and Stormy Archives project, which is a joint venture between Los Alamos National Laboratory and Old Dominion University. And we're trying to combine storytelling with web archives. And two of our software projects are Memento Embed and Raintail. And with storytelling, we can promote our collections on social media, we can explore aspects of a collection, or we can summarize it. And telling a story has three basic steps. One is to select the pages for the story. Two is to gather information to summarize each memento in one of our collections. And three is to summarize everything together uh, in, uh, and, and, and then publish the story so that other people can see it. And the goal here is to make sure that we drive people toward the collection so they, they can explore it further. And I have an example here where I show an archivic collection which has uh, more than 23,000 mementos in it. And this is the IPC's uh, COVID-19 collection. And on the left, the, the archivist has painstakingly added metadata and provided other information so that a user could explore the collection textually. We feed the whole collection through three tools, Hypercane, Memento Embed, and Raintail. Hypercane selects exemplars, selects uh, the mementos that best describe the collection. Memento Embed then creates an individual summary for each memento. And then Raintail ties it all together. And so we're on the left, we had this, this textual metadata and everything that was added uh, in order to try to provide information about the overall collection. On the right, we see people in masks. We see pictures of the virus. We see uh, maps of the virus spreading across the world combined with headlines and sources and dates and all kinds of other information. And of course, links back to the original collection. So the goal of the story on the right is to provide a nice summary so someone can see what the collection's about at a glance. And so Memento Embed gathers information on individual mementos, whereas Raintail ties everything together. And that's what my talk was largely about. So with these tools, we can turn a web archive collection into an enticing summary for our patrons. And we're currently piloting the DSA toolkit, which is all of these tools together. Uh, DSA stands for Dark and Stormy Archives. We're currently piloting this with the National Library of Australia. So it doesn't just work with Archive It, it works with a variety of web archives, anything that is Memento compliant, it should work for. Great, well, thank you very much, Sean. And um, then we're gonna go to the introduction of uh, the second talk, which was, um, Interactive Collage of Websites, a Deep Dive into the Web Archive Switzerland by Maya Bangerter, Kai Joslin, and Barbara Signori. I don't know why I'm trying to pronounce uh, the names in English. Um, they uh, have a short video that they would like to show. I mean, it's just uh, 1 minute 20, and it will show you very um, interactively um, what the project is about. So please, Olga, if you could launch the video. I think Barbara was going to introduce it. I did. Ah, okay. Uh, so, stop sharing. You have to switch your camera off as well. Great. I can see in the chat that the uh, video is very well liked and everybody wants to have the same uh, for their <laughs> own uh, web archive. So um, just very shortly, uh, Barbara is the head of the Department of eHealthetica at the Swiss National Library in Bern, and uh, Kai is the CEO of Nextension, and uh, he uh, was responsible for implementing the new eHealthetica e access and the collage. So um, if you could um, just briefly describe your uh, talk and your project. 
Yes, thank you, Eve. Um, apologizing for that, we had to show this video, but I, I think you can understand. So it's about um, it's about visualization. It's about new ways of accessing the archives and making them visible and, and even tangible. So therefore, there was no other way to show you the video or this short trailer um, of the full video than just um, a summary, a spoken summary. And, um, and I'm also sure now you that you have seen it, how, how cool it is to have this um, for example, in the entrance of your library or in the reading room, um, because it, it triggers the curiosity, um, it attracts attention, and that's what it's all about. That's what we like, what we like to achieve. So it's a first approach to to Web Archive Switzerland, because before it was very hidden. I mean, you probably all know it's on certain terminals because um, it's not freely accessible, so only accessible on site. Um, no one knows the web archive is there, no one sees it, so we, we really wanted to make it visible and, and yeah, we're very proud of, of, of this product and Kai um, developed it, so I'll leave um, also him to, to say a few words. Yeah, great, thanks Barbara. So, um, at the beginning, we were generating thumbnails for the eHelvetica access system, and we had this uh, around 50,000 thumbnails. And we thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice to have um, every all these thumbnails on a wall, like a poster, like a piece of art, so that the archive um, gets gets visible, gets tangible, comes into the room. <laughs> and of course, the next idea was like. Um, uh, why not make it interactive? And um, as soon as this idea was there, it was it was zoomable. We you could dive into it, but but still, the, it was just an image. <laughs> and um, only in the next step, we refined it and made made it a, a fully accessible um, web archive, so you can replay and search also. Okay, yeah, great. that's what well, you saw. <laughs> Thank you very much and hear more about it in the QA. Yeah. And now I would like to invite Saud uh, Alam on stage. And um, you can give an intro to his talk. So um, uh, his video was about summarizing your archival holdings with Memento Map. And was, um, I mean, he's presenting today, but it was a joint project with uh, Michael, uh, Michel Weigle. Uh, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing the name okay. Uh, Michael Nelson and Daniel Gomes, and uh, Dr. Saud Alam got his PhD in the Old Dominions University uh, Web Science and Digital Libraries Research Group, and is now a web and data scientist at the Internet Archive. So, uh, thank you, Saud. Uh, you can uh, do a brief recap, please. Thanks, Yves. Uh, uh, thanks for the introduction. I'm Saud Alam, uh, uh, web and data scientist at the Internet Archive. Um, uh, and my talk is uh, uh, basically a call for adoption uh, for the framework uh, called Memento Map. Uh, this is the framework that made me uh, Dr. Saud Alam from uh, not Dr. Sauda, Saud Alam. Uh, so basically my PhD uh, dissertation topic. Um, this whole thing started as a uh, uh, project funded by IIPC um, um, uh, and in which we explore um, a few things uh, to, you know, ways to uh, summarize holdings of all the web archives that, uh, that are like IIPC members are there. Um, and then when the project ended, I kind of took it as my dissertation topic and uh, advanced it further. And it has gone through the rigor and uh, all the explorations uh, to come up with a framework that I think is, is kind of uh, ready to be adopted by web archivists. And, um, and, and the idea of Memento Map is to uh, briefly summarize your holdings. And what happens is over the time as we run web archives, we collect a lot of things that we did not intend to, and we lose a lot of things that we actually wanted to collect, but they just some, somehow just uh, fall through. Um, so so w after a, a while, we have no idea what we have. And, and this happens with every large archive, I would say. Uh, and, and there is another gap where um, uh, users accessing web archives, they are looking for something and web archives are holding something else. 
the overlap between what they are looking uh, for and what is available in web archives is kind of small. Um, so having one view, like what people are looking or what is available in archives, both views are skewed in one way or the other. Um, uh, and a bigger picture is somewhere in the middle, basically, or a combination of the two. Um, so this um, um, memento map um, addresses all these variations and uh, one can decide how they want to um, you know, um, uh, make their uh, um, entire archive, not just a single collection, uh, summarized. Um, there are uh, options like you can make your entire CDF data available to public, but that is basically too much information and it goes stale very quickly and it, it becomes out of hand, like terabytes of data, how can someone easily download and sync uh, with that? Uh, on the other hand, if you say, hey, I just have .edu and .gov domains, and that's too small of information, and it will, it will uh, introduce a lot of false positives when someone tries to understand what, what is in there. So a primary use case is in um, uh, memento aggregators like uh, Lanel uh, Time Travel uh, or uh, our own Memgator uh, tool uh, that kind of uh, wants to know when people are looking up for a URL, which archives you want to go for it and collect data from, right? And, and not knowing that information would mean we are broadcasting and we are asking everyone. And if these memento aggregators are like high traffic uh, um, uh, sources, then they will uh, hurt small archives that may not be able to handle the, uh, uh, that much request that they do not have any uh, um, good results for. Um, and if they can advertise what they have um, somehow in a summarized way, then they will get fewer um, uh, false positives uh, that will be uh, going their way. So that's the point of Memento Map. We have released a tool um, that you can supply your CDF data or list of uh, URLs that you have, and it will generate a Memento Map for you. And then you can make it available uh, um, at slash dot well known uh, slash Memento Map path, and then it will be discoverable. Uh, and then, um, you know, aggregators can uh, 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 fetch it from there periodically and, um, uh, you know, uh, route queries more um, intelligently. Okay. And I have, well, a, I have shared yeah. the link of that uh, repository in the Slack, by the way, so if someone wants to have a look. Great, thank you. Um, so could I please also invite uh, Sean uh, and uh, Barbara and uh, Kai on stage and um, can uh, hopefully have an interesting discussion. So great. So when I was watching your presentations, I was um, wondering um, in what way the different projects um, help that help to make the collections more accessible to the users? Because um, I mean, currently the web archives are way too big, and it's very hard to access or grasp the scope of um, a complete web archive. So, um, if I may go uh, around once and. Uh, ask you this question to everyone. Uh, so maybe starting with Sean, you were uh, the first one in your uh, presentation. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, so let's see here. The, the, the thing that makes our project a little bit different from others is that, so you have a project like say Archives Unleashed, where that allows you, the, the uh, person who's cr maybe created your own collection to explore your works and get into them and figure out what's going on. As far as we're concerned, we're working with public web archive collections and we're looking at them from the outside. So it's a slightly different challenge. And the neat thing about this is it means we, we can drive patrons toward the collection um, that, that, that's already available to them that they just don't know it yet because there's, there's so much to go through. And so we have three tools that we that I kind of showed on the slide, and I apologize for breezing through it, but I was trying to give the other speakers plenty of time. Um, the uh, the first tool is Hypercane, and what it does is, is it goes through a web archive collection from the outside and allows the archivist or or, or whoever's exploring it to filter cluster things together, score them, and so on, or just use some pre-existing algorithms that we've developed and then reduce it to a set of exemplars that really conveys what the collection's about. 
And with all this customization, you can tell a story about a particular aspect of the collection. Like you don't have to summarize the whole thing. Maybe you just want something that happened on a particular date and all the pages that covered that. Or perhaps you want to cover all the pages that discuss a particular uh, place like Greece or something like that. You can just do that. And then once you have these exemplars, you feed them through Raintail. And Raintail's job is to take them, examine them, and um, oh, the second thing that Raintail asks you to provide is a template. And the goal of the template is, is to allow you to customize the story for your institution, for, for, for your output, whatever it is you're planning on doing with it. There's all kinds of things you can, you can do with Raintail. And you take this template, you take the, uh, th these exemplars that Hypercane or maybe you selected yourself, you put them together and Raintail then queries um, for each memento through Memento Embedded, asks Memento Embed information about these mementos and then renders them using the information provided by Memento Embed and then the template that you provided. And that's how it produces a, a nice summary of the collection. And then with all this multimedia experience that you're providing with your template, as I showed with the COVID-19 collection in the example, um, a user immediately gets the gist of what your collection's about. And so this makes it a lot more accessible to them. And then they, they know what this, what this collection is going to bring them and then they can go and visit it further and see what's, what's in there. They can make a decision as to whether or not maybe this collection is what they, they need for their project. So that, that's, that's kind of the goal is to essentially ensure that um, that somebody can look at one of our stories, one of our summaries and say, oh, I didn't know this collection existed. That's cool. Let me go check that out. I want to go visit this. Or, oh, I didn't realize I could find out about uh, what happened in North Texas on uh, January 2nd, you know, but now I do because I have this story. That, that, that the whole point is, is to try to make it accessible through sort of a multimedia experience and give people an idea on the web. Uh, that's the other thing is, is that these stories can be shared on the web and they can even be archived themselves depending on how you constructed them with your template. So all of that is essentially a way to make the, these collections more accessible and, and, it, and, and let people know that, that, they're, that these collections are there and available for them. Great. So um, that's a very complete answer. Thank you, Sean. I try. <laughs> it's also yeah. It's also a bit more uh, clear how um, the different things play together. Um, I imagine the collage is a, a great way to make it more accessible to users um, because uh, you're also presenting the collage online. So even though people cannot necessarily access the um, Web Archive Switzerland. Uh, they can access the collage. Um, what? Uh, how, how do you see it? Yeah, I mean, that was really, as I said in the beginning, was really our goal to, to raise awareness also that there is a Web Archive Switzerland in Switzerland. And because it's not just, as I said, hidden in the, in the National Library, in the reading room or in our partner libraries, but that we, we can show it. And with the collage, um, you, yeah, you, you see Shots, you, you get interested, you get curious about it, and, and you want to touch it, and you can touch it. That's I think it's also something nice um, that the websites get really tangible. Uh, you can with them for us. Um, it was also more a bit this playful approach we had, and and we wanted to um, to give this serendipity feeling <laughs> also um, on the internet or on, on technical. Um, surroundings to even though there's a question about the snapshots um, about the neighbor the, the snapshots that are um, close to each other if there is some um, um, ah, if I may jump in there there's um, directly a question from one of the um, audience that uh, is there a certain logic on how their neighbors um, one side to the next well actually we have thought about it we have thought about clustering thought about of, of options how we could do it but now it's just um it's actually just by well Kai will be more able to say it, but it's just um about the the years or the the frequency how it has been um archived um the snapshots yeah yeah but actually it's 
it's the the time <laughs> so it yeah. starts um, with the first snapshot we ever did in the top left and it ends uh, top right with the latest uh, snapshot uh, so if if you have the interactive version open you see top left i think it was 2007 or 2008 uh, political campaigns exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah but but we yeah. didn't want it to um to show this so it, it should really be users don't know this right now we told you <laughs> but, but we thought it, it has this <laughs> feeling of serendipity really that it's just the uh, yeah so that okay. was good yeah. and then we can further elaborate it and and make it more um usable for for research maybe also but now it was really this playful approach it's really the showing and um touching and yeah and but as you have seen maybe in the in the short video and in the long video there's also full text um search um in it so you can also search with a keyword um kai maybe you can explain it is um is that in the publicly available version on the internet um it is yes. as you said, but, yeah. yeah go ahead okay. Yes, there is uh, the link. We can post it uh, later. Uh, but you can't uh, you can't replay the web archives, the, the snapshots themselves, mm -hmm. because they are protected, uh, unfor unfortunately. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, uh, yes, about the search. So it's like um, all the archives are full text indexed in in four languages, um, or in all the languages that are available. I think there are also other uh, languages. Um, I, I don't know the exact count, but um, there are lots of languages which are not the primary languages of the country. <laughs> um, so, um, and this is in a, in a solar cloud index. Um, also, all the attachments, um, if available. So it does the full text search in the correct language, and um, this is what is available also in the collage. It's available. It comes from Innovative Access. Uh, and this is directly, it's the same mechanism that is used in the collage. Um, but then it goes just to the first, uh, the first um, group hit. Um, I, I would have to explain a little bit more about grouping the snapshots um, by, so, so we have this, like in one snapshot, we may have like uh, 1 million documents, <laughs> web pages maybe. Um, or 100,000. And so if you search, it will only return a specific number of hits for one specific snapshot. So in order that you that you find more than one site. Um, okay, so maybe that uh, already answers Martin Klein's question. Um, he wanted to know uh, that he can see individual snapshots of web pages, but um, he couldn't see how the different versions of um, the uh, websites are displayed and how you can um, navigate between the different versions. Actually, yeah, Barbara? Yeah, you can. So in the in the full video, um, you can see um, how we can in the snapshot. So so the, the images are all diff, um, snapshots, um, but when you open one, um, then you are in this uh, version and then on the la on the bottom, um, you have the images of the other versions of earlier um, copies of this same snapshot of the same website of the same domain. So, and then you can just click on it and, and view them. Very nice. So, um, Sawood, we did not forget you. <laughs> I um, will also, uh, I also wanted to know from you, it's like, how do you think that um, uh, making uh, these maps uh, has an impact on accessibility uh, for websites and for um, uh, web archives? So um, I think one big uh, uh, benefit that Memento Map brings to the table is um, um, generally not seen by regular uh, user of web archives, but it impacts um, uh, performance uh, of aggregators like the discoverability of uh, uh, resources across web archives is what Memento Map enables more efficiently without wasting resources in, into looking into web archives where things don't exist. At the same time, it also benefits 
small web archives to flourish and be more discoverable. Uh, um, you know, I mean, yeah, we, we make uh, interesting collections, but either we open it to everyone to ask for everything, but we don't have, we will be, uh, be more interested in if people come to us with questions that we have an answer for, right? And, and kind of Memento Map gives this, uh, uh, this opportunity to be discovered via web, uh, Memento Aggregators uh for only uh, urls that you have and now uh, uh, the since memento uh, protocol itself and also memento map they work on url level so they don't care about the content uh, uh, of the page so you are not doing like a full text search uh, or anything you look for a specific url and you uh, 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 you know perform so yeah it is it is behind the scene but it's helping users and archives both um uh, uh, by being um, uh, you know, more efficient uh, in doing uh, uh, aggregation uh, and being more discoverable in uh, uh, helping the uh, smaller web archives flourish, basically. I, I had a crazy it, idea while watching your talk, um, and I don't know what you, I would really like your opinion about this. Um, you also mentioned that a lot of web archives are closed and uh, you have to basically travel to a reading room somewhere in the world to access them. and. Um, what if uh, those uh, memento maps available to somebody like an aggregator and then that aggregator could um, display well nobody has it except this library in new zealand and then uh, there are a lot of more flights going to new zealand from the web archivist <laughs> community so so this is this is actually a very interesting question and kind of um, um uh, if you read my uh, dissertation which talks about these scenarios a lot and uh, there are, um, you know, the, what Memento Map allows is like you, you can have pagination or separate Memento Maps for a specific tasks, right? And uh, one of the thing is um, if you have a specialized collection that is protected and you can only access it within a geo boundary uh, of some sort or whatever is the, uh, uh, the um, uh, you know, uh, proximity where you can access it, you can have a specific Memento Maps just for that, right? And, and it is will it will be the job of the aggregator to understand that and see whether or not they want to aggregate that right so uh, so what it brings to the table is like you can still advertise that i have this maybe it is not accessible to you but i still have it right and and this knowledge itself is kind of very uh, uh, um, uh, comforting if if a resource is held by certain web archives we, uh, the world doesn't have to worry about it and even if it is not accessible today, there is a mean to go somewhere and access it or 10 years down the line or something when things open up, maybe it will be accessible. So we did not lose the history. That that comfort is kind of, you know, the guarantee is, is a very important thing I think to have in there. Okay, great. Um, I'll directly follow up with a question from the public, which is uh, um, an anonymous question. What barriers in time, terms of uh, time and labor do you anticipate for an archive to generate such a memento map for the whole archive? So there are two types of memento maps and they are basically, they can live together, they can be merged, combined or kept separate. One that tells what type of archive holds and we call it archival holdings. And then what a web archive does not have, like archival void, that's the term that we use for it. So the sources of knowledge for these are different. Archival holdings, you can look into your CDX uh, uh, index and you say, hey, here are the, all the URLs that we have and this is the frequency of each and uh, you can generate with that, right? Archival void is based on what is your um, uh, access control policy that only internal web archives know, not anyone else outside maybe uh, aware of it. Um, and how you are storing your access control list, basically, that's a different story. Also, what people are looking into um, uh, your uh, your web archive. So that is the information that you can get from access log, right? And if you look at it, and if there is a resource that is being requested again and again and again, and you never had the copy of it, basically, it perhaps it's a good idea to advertise like, hey, don't ask for, uh, uh, ask for this one. We don't have it, or we don't want to show it. Okay, um, maybe it is it is from a domain that is beyond our. Uh, collection policy, we do not want to hold on to uh, that resource, so we don't want to show that, right? Um, so generating archival wide profile is kind of a little bit more involved. Uh, just uh, the converting into the format of uh, uh, archival wide is not a, uh, not a problem. That's easy. It's just the sources that you are kind of you know getting this information from that will be like a, it is less generalizable. 
archival holdings profile the, that you do based on your CDX data is very easy. And um, uh, we proudly say that we have implemented a, a, a very memory and time efficient algorithm that is a single pass. So it will go through whatever time it takes to scan your CDX data, that will be the time it will take and, you know, a little bit uh, more. And literally like seven, eight or 20 objects stored in the memory and that's all it needs. And it kind of dynamically uh, 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 shrinks your uh, output as it learns more and more. Um, uh, so uh, that's an interesting piece of algorithm that we uh, talked about. Uh, if you want to learn more about the challenges that we had in generating uh, archival void profile, our uh, JCDL2 2021 paper, which is recently accepted, whenever it is out, uh, you should be able to read that, or um, there is a chapter in, our, in my dissertation that talks about it. Uh, we actually performed analysis on uh, um, uh, archivo PC uh, uh, data set and uh, their access logs and everything. And we found like interesting problems that you, that is like specific to a specific archive and how to deal with that. Okay. And um, just uh, to, I mean, do you have an idea how long it took uh, for the CDX data in archivo PT to be processed? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we do have- A couple of hours, a um, couple of days or? Oh, um, I think they had like, um, um, the whole, uh, there was like 5 billion uh, entries were there and it took like uh, two, three hours or something like that. So, uh, wow. In the slide itself and and uh, in our paper, uh, uh, there is a JCDL 2019 paper uh, on this, where we have like a proper, um, you know, um, uh, table where we describe the size of the input and what kind of, you know, um, how detailed you want your, your uh, uh, archival uh, uh, memento map. There are knobs that you can adjust, like how detailed or how uh, some, uh, you know, uh, summarized you want it. And based okay. on that, what is the output uh, uh, size and timing and everything is kind of reported in there. It, it doesn't take too long. Whatever it, time it takes to kind of read uh, your file and kind of write the output into something. Um, and there was um, uh, uh, one thing uh, that is related to this is uh, labor involved in this. And I think for archival holding part, it will become a lot easier if some of the replay systems like um, uh, 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 Open Wayback or PyWB um, or any other Wayback machine that we have, if they have like built-in mechanism to, as you add stuff to your archive, it automatically takes care of it. And uh, the way it exposes CDX API, the way it exposes Memento API, it can also expose, um, you know, uh, Memento map uh, along with that. And you just have to in your config file is somewhere configure like, hey, this is the amount of detail I want and it will automatically do it. So it okay. is uh, surely doable. Great, thank you, Saud. I mean, that's uh, very interesting and it will, uh, it's very promising to see that uh, other archives will be able to implement this uh, without too much trouble. That's great. Um, a better similar question actually to uh, Sean and in the interest of time, I hope uh, Sean's answer will, will be a bit shorter. Um, it's a question from Ian Milligan. Um, how does it scale? I mean, could a large institution run this on all their collections to bootstrap collection level met metadata? Or is it better to run it on smaller collections? I'm guessing that uh, he's uh, specifically talking about um, the first part, which would be Hypercane. Yeah, and, and it's, it's interesting because uh, we hadn't developed Hypercane when we submitted the abstract, so it didn't make it in. So it was largely about Raintail and Memento Embed. But for Hypercane, uh, yes, it's it's designed to work with large collections. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't have to wait if you know because the collection is is of size and it does have to process it. However, we are working on uh, well, everything in it is multi-threaded, so we we are working on optimizing things. And of course, because it's very modular one can run different components in on, on different machines and things of that nature. So you can actually speed it up in its current uh, in, in its current iteration right now, just by, uh, by, by carefully running the commands the way that you would want where you would want them. Okay. Um, so that is something that uh, at your archive at uh, Old Dominion, you can run on bigger stories or you're running it on um, only on the Internet Archive at the moment. Oh, uh, Hypercane. Uh, we we it's it, it's a client or a client. It's it's a tool you can download. There's a GitHub repository. You can run it from your workstation, provided you have enough RAM and everything. Um, and we haven't quite figured out what the minimum is, but uh, you should be able to run Hypercane on your workstation. I mean, I I, I do it every once in a while here, uh, and 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 I've I've run it on a variety of machines. I, I use it for my research as well, 
So you, it's designed so that you could check it out. And thanks to Saud's help, uh, we, we can now run it via Docker with Docker Compose. And it uh, you, you just run it, uh, create your exemplars from a collection, and then you get a nice list. And the nice thing about Hypercane is, is that every command accepts a list of memento URLs. So you just take, take the output from one command and feed it into the next. And so you can just keep narrow filtering down or clustering or whatever it is you need to do in order to to make your uh, to, to get to your list and uh, of course you can do whatever you want with that list uh, we, we we suggest that you go ahead and feed it into rain so you can visualize it but you could also take the list and feed it into some other third-party tool it was designed to be very modular and very interoperable there's a, another question in q a i'm not I, I hope you understand it i'm not so sure that I do, um, which is related exactly to this, the clustered mementos. So uh, the question is uh, from an anonymous person. Unfortunately, we cannot ask a follow-up, but um, what sort of information is queryable from the clustered mementos in a collection that Memento Embed has generated? Okay, and I, I think this is an artifact of me having to speak too quickly. <laughs> um, Memento, Embed, Memento Embed's job is to just provide a summary for a single Memento, one. So it can do this by generating a card or it has an API that provides you with information. So you could ask Memento Embed's API for the top sentences or the best images or things like that. And Memento Embed then can produce um, other things like uh, a, 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 a screenshot of the page or something like that. Raintail will take that information and then combine it with your template and produce whatever sort of visualization you want to create for that collection. Hypercane is the tool that cr does the clustering and um, the filtering and other things of the collection. And so, um, and I'm sorry, what was the original question? It disappeared. Uh, the original question uh, I and marked it as uh, that we're sorry. answering it. So it was maybe a bit premature, but um, the original question was that um, how these um, clusterings uh, work. Oh, so there's different types of clustering, and we tried to make Hypercane very, very adaptable for what uh, the archivist or, or you know, me, the researcher, would need in order to explore collections. So you can cluster by the memento date time when the individual items were captured. You can cluster by more recently. I added, um, haven't announced this yet, but I added TFIDF, so you can cluster based off of the uh, the terms and whatnot. Uh, we also have. Uh, you know, uh, clustering by latent Dirichlet allocation. No, I mispronounced the guy's name. Um, but the point is you have, you can do topic modeling and we don't do topic modeling in the sense of producing a bunch of terms that describe parts of the collection, but we use the clustering aspect of topic modeling to try to explore the collection. There's, um, you can cluster by uh, sim hash just to determine how similar some things are together in terms of their, their hash. Uh, there's also another clustering algorithm that was developed by Yasmin Alnomeni, um, where she inserted mementos into buckets, essentially, by their by when they were captured. And once they fill up a bucket, you start filling up the next bucket. It's a different okay. way of exploring the collection. So there's a Very lot of options with Hypercane. Very interesting. Um, I'm going to go to the question that has been upvoted the most for Barbara and Kai. Um, which uh, is a question from Abby Grotke. Um, what has the reaction and the feedback been for um, the collage uh, from researchers and from your staff? Yeah, the, um, <laughs> the, we developed the in winter 2019 and it was supposed to be launched in March 2020 and you know all, all oh. know what happened in March. <laughs> It was a big event. We wanted to present it at the library, you know, so that people can walk on it and see the web archive. So, so it was a bad timing, actually. Ah. <laughs> so it was uh, quite hidden also this one because the library was closed. But we have opened the library again. So there are, there are users standing there. So that's, that's nice to see. But um, we don't have any figures yet because really the, the library hasn't been open for, for that long yet. But, um, but I will use also this video to make um, publicity now also in Switzerland because I really hope that our partners um, will also have the collage this part in their um, libraries. And, um, and I said, uh, I could see it everywhere. I can see it in archives and museums, but I, 
I can see it also at the station. I don't know. I would like to <laughs> see it everywhere. Okay, there, there will be a legal problem again. Um, but, you know, just to broaden up our um, premises of the library, have a little bit of library in other parts in Switzerland. <laughs> just by part of the train station. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, just... um, but a really good question that uh, is a follow up on this one um, is, uh, yeah, if it's uh, something, I mean, because there is so, so much enthusiasm from the community about it, and uh, because you also want it to be used more. So um, conversely, are there any plans on open sourcing the code for other web archives um, that they can use it, uh, such a collage, make it available? Well, I can say something um, technically for it. it it's um, the problem is it's depending quite much on the Helvetica access, which is mm -hmm. the access system for uh, all the index. So um, the collage itself is not um, very complicated and um, might one day be open source. Uh, I think maybe Barbara <laughs> can say something about it. <laughs> yeah, well, we haven't discussed it, but it's surely a question take hold and, and see um, what we can do. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. So uh, we have just time for maybe one or two questions. And uh, I would like to uh, take a question that is uh, for both uh, Barbara and Saud. And um, the question is whether Memento Map and the collage visualization could be somehow used in combination. Um, I'm guessing that uh, this goes into the idea that um, you want to summarize uh, your holdings using the mental map in some way so that um, you have a smaller representation and then use that representation to generate screenshots to a collage. Would that be uh, something useful? Barbara, you go oh. first. Okay, so someone's. No, no, uh, I, okay, no, I leave Kai. I, this is Kai's. <laughs> Okay, okay I, I just uh, think maybe um, you could combine it with, um, with filtering, like uh, like put a filter over all the collage and see where where um, content comes from other archives. Um, so maybe that would help, like uh, overview filter. <laughs> so a few things I would note here is like that depends on the the purpose. Um, uh, primary role uh, or purpose of um, uh, Memento Map is to um, allow aggregators to know about the holdings of an archive. However, for usual, uh, for users, um, it sure has value. Like, for example, you are uh, showing the uh, collage of thumbnails and all. Uh, somewhere underneath, you can say, um, you know, there are uh, five or 10 or 20 uh, pages in this collage from xyz.com uh, slash who slash star. So rather than listing them all, you can just compress them down uh, and have like one entry that talks about you know, 10, 20, 30 pages and so on. So people quickly look at it and say, hey, okay, so these are the, the, uh, the sources where the data is coming from. That's one way to kind of, you know, integrate it. Um, but I would like to note here is like, even though their archive is a uh, dark archive right now, it's not accessible from anywhere else. As I mentioned before, they can still leverage uh, Memento Map to advertise their holdings um, you know, uh, outside basically and tell people like we have it. Yeah. I, we know it's a call to action. Thank you very much, uh, yes. Saud. Um, well, thank you very much for uh, this very interesting discussion. Our time is uh, up.